Kendrick Lamar is terrifying to his fellow rappers, not just in the wake of his recent activity, but long before he was ever as battle-tested as he is now. At the minute, hip-hop is basking in the landscape where he destroyed Drake so savagely that his name is now being used as an acronym to warn others. I'm rap against Kendrick ever. Ever? You didn't sit home with the fucking Blackberry or the bum composition book and write acronyms for your own fucking name. But while Drake's defeat at KDOT's hands has proven exactly why so few have gone at Kendrick over the years, what is it that makes his reputation so fierce in the first place? Well, there's actually a variety of factors that made it clear to the whole world that Kendrick wasn't a man to trifle with. My name is Luesta, and this is why rappers are scared of Kendrick Lamar. There's a lot of angles to tackle why Kendrick has such a reputation for being one of the MCs that you just don't attempt to rhyme against. But one of the main reasons is that the reverence that the culture has for him trickles down to the top of the industry. Co-signed by Dr. Dre and passed the torch to the West Coast by Snoop Dogg, The Game, Corrupt, and Time shit. every other OG you can think of. Time shit. Even the legendary Eminem once thought that his pen game couldn't possibly live up to the hype. The thing with Eminem was crazy to me, he kicks everybody out the studio. I, I took it as him kicking everybody out to see if that's really you writing the rap oh. that you're writing. <laughs> Okay. What's good, Junior? To be upset at rappers who use ghostwriters, that's a pretty fair assumption. But as Ed Sheeran remembered, he soon found out exactly why KDOT was given so many props by people that he respected. Eminem, he'd heard that Kendrick Lamar was the best rapper, and he invited him to the studio to get, get him on a song, and he arrived, and Kendrick came with all his mates. And uh, Eminem said, um, I just want you in the studio, just you on your own. And then my engineer is going to come in and then record you doing it, but your mates aren't allowed in. And then Kendrick did it, wrote a sick verse, and then all everyone came in to listen to it. And Eminem said he did it to test Kendrick because he thought he had a ghostwriter, and he then realized that he didn't, and then claimed that he was the best. Ever since the two of them collaborated on Love Game off the Marshall Mathers LP2, Eminem has known that Lamar is among the elites in the game. Oh and shit! In a rare show of vulnerability from Shady, he suggested that he would think twice about coming for Kendrick. It's the same thing if I get on a getting on a track with Kendrick. I can never tell what the fuck he's gonna do right because he is such a chameleon of styles and he can fucking do any pretty much anything right? right and he's and he's so proficient at it he's so good at it and you don't know what you're gonna get that to me is like a top tier lyricist because it's like Hey man. You can get your ass kicked any day. Besides overshadowing rappers on features, KDOT never had to square off with other MCs in the same way that Shady had to in his career. But he always insisted that he had it in him to tear a rapper to shreds, even after he became a mainstream star. Tight shit. The Section 80 campaign basically revolved around the claim that he would kill your favorite rapper. Then on Damn's Element, he issued a warning that all they had to do was say his name and they'll see Candyman. <laughs> winning a Pulitzer Prize, he let his colleagues know what time it was on Rich Spirit, where he told them to stop playing with him before he turns you into a song. Yo. Now, in the wake of Aubrey's demolition and J. Cole waving the white flag, we know that wasn't an idle threat as over these past few weeks, he's left massive footprints on their legacies. As they struggle to pick themselves back up, you can imagine that no one will be stepping to Dot anytime soon. But long before everything that followed Kendrick's declaration of fuck the big three, it's just big me went down, rappers already showed a real reluctance to cross him. In fact, when they let their ego get in the way and spoke out against him, they usually decided to pay homage instead. Because although he had never really been in a battle until Drake thought he could take him on, he already proved how much his presence and the chatter around your career can do. Ty shit. In many ways, Big Sean is pretty much the reason why Kendrick is going at Drake in the first place. By now, we all know about KDOT's infamous verse on Control, where he hijacked Big Sean's track to let the whole industry know that even though he had love for them, he was trying to murder them and take their fame. <laughs> at the same time, Big Sean insisted that he didn't even get bodied on the track even though he opted to leave it off his hall of fame album that it was originally intended to be on but he never really managed to escape its shadow i put that work in like you're not going to disrespect me i i hop on any track with anybody and i will not only stand my own you're going to know that it's my verse and you're going to know i'm that's I'm, what i'm like okay, except for control kendrick watch you want control no stop it sean come stop on it. now <laughs> come on and how long was how long ago is that what year is it? That were you right? You got better. You okay, right. Everybody okay. You're right. 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 Well, what's control? Like I got washed anyway. 
Now nah, you got to watch something. Whatever. <laughs> Your opinion. See, that's what I'm saying. You can't, <laughs> you can't focus on people's opinions. You right. know why? Because that's going to throw you off. Although he never fully accepted that there was beef, Big Sean did attempt to throw subliminal shots at Dot from time to time. For example, on songs like Me, Myself, and I and No More Interviews, people felt like the Detroit rapper was aiming at Kendrick's rapping style. But Yikes. as is often the case, Kendrick never even acknowledged that anything was going down. Then, on the hard part four, he let the world know that he heard what was being said and that if he kept pushing, Big Sean would get what he thought he wanted. My fans can't wait for me to sun your punk ass and crush your whole little shit. I'll be pun your punk ass, you a scared little bitch. Oh. He never got a formal diss track dedicated to him. He oh. informed in no uncertain terms that Kendrick would come at his neck whenever he wanted to. Meanwhile, the control situation left such a permanent imprint on Big Sean's career that you can almost divide it between the time before that verse and everything that happened after. And in a move that has really set the tone for how people come out of the other side of squabbling with Kendrick, Big Sean speaks of him with nothing but admiration now and basically acts as if there was never a problem in the first place. The whole... Ken, Big, Big Sean Kendrick beef was going on. It was something I wish I would have spoke up about because there was nothing. So then that's I, crazy. Like, oh, that's talking crazy. About, I'm talking about people who rap fast. Yo, Big Big Sean. First of all, Big Sean always looked well groomed. You know what I'm saying? Like, like really. Like Thank a, you. Come again. Like a, oh, people should follow. Ain't gonna lie. Yo, Queen, put your little follow, ain't gonna lie. Little Queen, let's put this on follow. It's like, whoa. He didn't want any problems. Like, kind of sexy ass guy, I ain't gonna lie. Pause, no diddy, but like, all the way diddy type shit, you feel me? And then, 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 and it was just a weird tension between me and him, even though it was already said that it wasn't no beef because people made it that way, right? Although Big Sean finally got the raw end of the deal out of control, there was another man on the track who goes by the name of Jay Electronica. And oh, I don't know who. Well who was this? Greatest MCs at the time. He didn't escape unscathed either. Basically, who? Jay Elect didn't appreciate the fact who? that people were saying Kendrick who? was on the track. In fact, he said that Dot was envious of him. Kendrick will body you. Look, you couldn't pay Kendrick a million dollars. Kendrick wouldn't tell you. Kendrick could tell you himself he couldn't body me. Kendrick, look, Kendrick is my son. Kendrick is hey, my Hey, yo, Kendrick okay. Wish he said he could be me. Followed up with his verse on The Curse of Mayweather, where he rapped. He got 11 Grammy nominations, Yama Equal, Man Fuck These White People, which refers to the amount of Grammys Kendrick won at the time. He followed it up with My Grandmother Died at 82 Scrubbing Floors, and rappers still running around begging for awards. J Leg looked like he was practically begging for problems. Then, from out of nowhere, he seemed to have a change of heart and was giving giving Dot his flowers all of a sudden. Lastly, peace to K-Dot and TDE because regardless to whom or what, we're brothers fighting the same energy. Forgive my past energy. Although it's unclear what made him switch up like that, Jay, like many rappers were going oh, to- Oh, he's teeth are fucked up. Another man who folded on Dot when he was put to the- He's teeth are, he's teeth are master. The pop's response to Kendrick's name drops on control not only laid the groundwork for the Drake beef, but it also set the precedent for how rappers would tiptoe around him. At the time, there were tons of responses to control, but they all seemed like they were carefully towing the line as to not not go too far. For example, after feeling angered that Slaughterhouse were left out of the shoutouts, one of the group's members, Joel Ortiz, responded with the vicious track titled Out of Control, where he let Kendrick have it. Oh yo. You the king of New York, little homie, you ain't the king of New York. You the next thing on my floor. But later on, he would do an interview with Vibe and say that he was actually saluting Kendrick for the most part. <laughs> After the notoriously fearless Joe Budden, he was hosting a live stream for the response track only to opt out and not release it. Amid responses from Papoose and others, Kendrick remained so calm about the whole thing that it would be impossible for it to not strike fear in their hearts. How you feeling about all the, um, all the comebacks lately from your uh, control verse? You gotta try hard. So when they, they gotta were, try they harder. The whole culture Yo. That Lamar was to be treated with respect. Basically, there's always a caveat when it comes to Kayla. They gotta come harder, bro. Anyone really coming for his neck. I mean, just look at what happened to French Montana when he attempted to diss him. Over the years, French has had a few things to say about Kendrick. First off, he claimed that he was being pushed by the industry. Why you think Kendrick sells more than like beat rappers? Um, because they because they position him like how they did in the Grammys. Mm. As 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 the new music. But I don't feel like that's, you know, it's not, not, it's not that it's not the right thing to do, but I just feel like they, you see, it's like the whole thing was like Kendrick Knight. 
Then, more ridiculously, he said that he had more hits than him, only to be clowned relentlessly by the internet. If we're just talking about anthems, me versus Kendrick hit for hit, I believe I can go neck to neck. I've been making hits for a long time. I love Kendrick. That's not just for Kendrick, that's for anybody they put in front of me. However, not everyone agreed with this. I mean, even other rappers hopped on the bandwagon to mock him for it. Stupid Andy say he got no <laughs> Yo, I love Thug, bro. I love Thug, bro. Man, so he got me and Kendrick. Oh. Kendrick got more hits than my nigga Kendrick. And damn sure he got more hits or anthems than me. You smoke hard. Why you tripping? But while he was uh, with Thug and engaged in a war of words with him over it, French Montana never tried to provoke KDOT any further. And now, just like everyone else, French has since basically apologized for even thinking he could mess with him and said he was just in his feelings at the time. I was just heated I ain't win a Grammy for, for Unforgettable. That's what it was? Yeah, but Kendrick is my dog. But just that, just that one, one, one day at the interview, I was just so heated that I ain't win and he was the winner. And I was just like, yo. <laughs> But I fuck with Kendrick. I fuck, I fuck with the whole, um, with the whole team. Opting to say that he was in the wrong rather than say Kendrick had Yo. in it, this is a rare show of humility for a rapper. Yo. Who has been taking all the flack for getting up on that Dreamville festival stage and saying that his seven minute drill diss song towards Kendrick. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, that seven minute drill was hard. I ain't gonna lie, it was hard. It right with his spirit. Was a hard. Off streaming services. When I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel. That shit disrupts my fucking peace. History shows that he's not the first person to make his apologies to Kendrick. And maybe fear of being dismantled on a verse wasn't the only reason. Although his immense talents on the mic are one major factor, French extending his love to Kendrick's whole team is important. Because as these rappers likely learned before going at his neck, messing with Kendrick requires you to go up against an army. And while Kendrick might have been a good kid in a match. Yo, this is a WB go. I'm locked in, bro. I'm locked, bro. I'm locked. He's got a whole city behind him. And there's something dangerous about Kendrick that not a lot of people speak about. Growing up in Compton, Kendrick was exposed to the gang lifestyle early on, and many of his best friends were active members. Then, after joining TDE, he suddenly found himself in the midst of the Bounty Hunter Bloods and Hoover Crips as he teamed up with fellow label mates Schoolboy Q and J-Rock, as well as a whole host of other people who were repping sets. Recently, Kendrick's gang ties have come under the microscope again, because if the rumors are true, Cole might have received a tip to back off from the beef that sounds not too dissimilar to what you'd see on the streets from Schoolboy Q. Reporting from Dreamville Festival, an unnamed source revealed that it was actually Schoolboy Q who allegedly warned J. Cole to stop beefing with Kendrick before the apology. I'm not specifying what kind of warning, whether it was a bullying move, a Debo-like maneuver, or just a friendly heads up. I don't think it matters at this point, but based on what Punch, TDE's president, said, I think they gave him what he needed to hear to bow out of the battle hey, as, yo. As, as possible. Whether he was letting him know what kind of heat KDOT had in store for Drake with the abuse allegations, or telling him to ease up before things got dangerous hey this yo situation proves that whatever kendrick is getting involved in the streets he grew up on have his back in terms of gangs kendrick has long been rumored to have connections to the west side pyro in addition to his affiliation to the red side if pyro's and crips all got along they'll probably gun me down by the air of the song crips several of which have served a lengthy jail terms for gang related activity and armed robbery and he's still seeing like the whole city go against me come out every time you come to compton <laughs> as a result of his connections, as well as old pictures of Kendrick dressed in red, Drake's recent assessment that he isn't affiliated to a set on his new track, Family Matters, has been ridiculed by people from Compton. While at the same time, respecting Kendrick's desire to withhold that from becoming a big part of his identity. Drake says you don't bang a set, and he says the game bangs a set, even Chris Brown bangs a set. He just don't know Kendrick. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, has, has Kendrick renounced his hood, hood affiliation at certain nah, point? Kendrick just don't be private and so like priding himself off of his gang culture. So I guess people think that he a non affiliate. I don't know if we post it, but you know, hey. Try shit. Like the yeah, the fact is Kendrick severely the, downplays gang affiliation. The push ups was in his hood, wasn't they? The push ups that you know. talk about they at the park. Once again, the clues for Cali having his back have all been there in the music. On Section 80's Poe Man Dreams, Kendrick has a line where he says, City got my back, before that I give them my trust, so you think about it. Basically, what he's saying here is that he can say things with his chest because he knows that he has the city behind him. And when you look close at those videos of Not Like Us going off in the club, he should definitely feel more confident in that than ever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
but while this could be taken literally for the whole state of California, that line may contain allusions to his gang ties. In an interview from back in the day, Snoop Dogg went into more detail about this. It's just that he's, he's a nice guy, so we don't have a problem with it because he doesn't have a gangster approach. But let me let y'all know, he got a hundred thousand motherfucking gangsters with him. <laughs> Yo, hundred thousand is crazy. Yo, hundred thousand is crazy. In spite of the fact that Kendrick hasn't ever definitively said he was a gangbanger, what we do know is that there are times in his life where he moved like one. Back in the day, Dot tried to intimidate AD of the No Jumper podcast and back on Fig because Kendrick thought he was from a rival neighborhood. Hey, you wanna know a crazy thing about Kendrick, bro? My first encounter with him, he thought I was somebody else, bro. He, he low-key tried to press me. Who? Kendrick Lamar. Who, Who he thought you he was? was? He from a different hood. I guess like, I guess some niggas jumped him back in the day and I came to the studio and he was mad. He was like, hey, you from Almond Block? And I was like, nah, but he was hot. He banged on the neck. Where's Almond Block? No, he, no, Almond Block. Where's Almond Block? And God. And I was like, nah, I ain't from Almond Block. I thought you were lying. And he was like, you live from Almond Block. I'm like, nah, I ain't from Almond Block. I'm over here. Did he, did he was he, like, all right. And then we was cool after that. But, it, but, but he, he was say, mad though. All right. No, he was mad. Yeah, <laughs> he was. He was like. He was mad. Like, like yeah. I, if I was Marvin Block, he would have got his get back on me that day. From the gang members which regularly appear in his music videos, the musical appears like mustard, proving that they'll throw away any other relationship to ride for his Cali comrade. Dot's status as king of the West Coast and everything that entails it would make anyone think twice before coming at him. But while there was speculation that Kendrick wasn't to be taken lightly, it's safe to say that this Drake battle has made that crystal clear. Although Ovio stands like Maw or academics may argue otherwise, there's no denying that Kendrick washed Drake. Bearing the music itself, the fact that he overthrew Drake's record for the highest streams for a rap song in a day with a track where he calls him a sex offender is just it's crazy. Now, it's literally crazy. What's good, Hems? I knew Kendrick Lamar was a dude. My bad, Hems. I'm, lo I'm literally locked in, bro. I'm locked in, Hems. I, I apologize. I'm locked in, broski. To be left alone. I still, I still, I, hey, my heart. I was saying Pookie, my heart. Something is clearly wrong with him. Look at this video of him doing burpees in a parking lot while listening to oldies drop. Something is clearly wrong with him. Look at this fucking psychopath. <laughs> His willingness to take a rapper out aside, what's happening to Drizzy these days further explains to why he wasn't challenged before now. Because while people have been throwing jabs at Drake for years, it doesn't matter if they don't hit the general public. But with Kendrick, you have a rare mix of someone who isn't just obscenely skilled, but also has the platform to slander you and reach huge audiences. Type it's shit. Of embarrassment, he's a better rapper than almost everyone in the industry skill-wise. He can do both mainstream and underground style music when most artists just choose one and never change. Because he can immortalize you in a negative light in the form of a classic hit. If you needed proof that this is a real thing, just look at this school teacher's comments about the change in tone around Drake in the wake of Not Like Us dropping. I, up until today, taught at a very Drake-centric high school. Rich Baby Daddy is the most frequently requested song to put on my class playlist. If I ask students what they're listening to in their headphones, Drake. The week after the leak was a nightmare. But today, I walk in and I can feel that there has been a tectonic shift. Oh my god. This is a Kendrick school now. I pulled my classes on what they thought and they were ready to throw down for Kendrick. I had like one Drake defender in each class, if that. And honestly, I had kids because they were getting screwed. As people move to the sides, he has even hit Drake in his pockets. According to Billboard, from May 3rd to May 6th, Lamar's discography earned around 50 million streams, up 49% from the previous Friday to Monday track. Meanwhile, Yo. Drake's overall catalog is actually down. <laughs> Yo, I ain't gonna lie. I've been skipping Drake. I ain't gonna lie, bro. <laughs> Yo, whatever Drake song come on, I, I, I'm hitting next. I'm hitting next, bro. See, bro, I can't be caught and listen to a, 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 possi a possible pedophile. The fuck? Fuck out of the light, bro. See, the hell? compare his streams from that weekend to last weekend and remove his two streaming available response tracks, push-ups, and family matters. Although Kendrick won't overtake Drake's streaming numbers as a whole, what is clear is that Kendrick's versatility has proven to be a weapon, and as Eminem suggested earlier, one of the reasons why it's not advisable to test him. You go through all these records from Like That to Euphoria to 616 LA to Meet the Grams to Not Like Us, none of those records sound the same at all. It's the widest range I've ever seen Facts. in the amount of time in any disc battle ever. When it comes to the rapping and the music, fuck all like the timeline or what's true and what's not true, who's rapping and who is putting out the better records. Kendrick Lamar 
checked every fucking box sonically that you could think of. From his pen game to his potential gang ties, there are lots of reasons why Kendrick is feared, but the biggest reason of all should be how seriously he takes his craft. I'm so passionate about hip hop, man. Like, I don't know what era everybody else comes from, but I listen, man. Like, we play house parties, bro, every night. I love it to a point I can't even describe it. And when I heard these artists say they're the best coming up, I said, I'm not doing it to have a good song mm -hmm. or one good rap or a good hook or a good bridge. I want to keep doing it every time, period. And to do it every time, Damn. you challenge yourself. Yo. And you have to confirm to yourself that you're the best, mm -hmm. period. This explains the responsibility he feels to uphold standards, as well as why Drake taking the culture without giving back bothers him so much. This is not something you just play with, you know, get some few dollars and get out, you know. People live their lives to this music. It's my partners in the hood right now. They listen to rap every day because it's the only thing that can relate to their stories and their tribulations. You have Type of to shit. Take in consideration what you write down in that paper. And if you're not doing it to say the most impactful, you're doing it to be the best you can be for the listener. Yo, R.I.P. Nipsey. Always one to keep his sword sharp, Kendrick would never allow himself to lose with that kind of mindset. In a genre where other rappers lose their hunger over time, k has always stayed as determined to prove himself as when overly dedicated drops. At the same time, never bothering anyone unless he feels provoked. To explain why Kendrick is among the most feared rappers of any era, that handy bottle phrase that dates back to Roman times. If you want peace, prepare for war. Whether you may realize Show. it or not, Kendrick stays ready. And after destroying Drake, he's probably bought himself a whole lot of that coveted peaceful life for decades to come. Unless someone is stupid enough to ignore these warnings and try him again. Bumble Clyde. Yo, that was a fire video. Ain't gonna lie. Yo, that shit had me. Yo, I was quiet. When is, when is Prince Barber quiet, broski?